Bonjour et bienvenue sur la vlog. Je m'appelle Nafi et je suis un étudiant de médecine à l'Université de Leeds. Mais aujourd'hui, je pars en vacances à Bordeaux à 3 heures. God, I hope that was right. It took me like 20 times to recite this. If I didn't get that correct. Hello everyone and welcome back to the vlog. My name is Nafi and I'm a medical student studying at the University of Leeds. But today, I am going on holiday to Bordeaux for three days and I'm vlogging it. So I'm taking you guys along with me. Since recording my intro, uh, I thought my train was half an hour later than it actually was. So I had to rush to the train station in about five minutes to catch my train and somehow I have managed to catch it with a couple minutes to spare. So thank God for that. This is probably the best way to start a holiday on your own, being late for the train to get anywhere. be a massive idiot and I don't think I've left enough time for me to go get the actual plane. I've left about an hour and a half between me arriving at the airport and me actually getting past security and onto the plane. Less than an hour and a half, about an hour and 20 minutes, which is definitely not long enough. Bollocks. I have been rushing around to get to Gatwick Airport and I'm just sitting outside the terminal and I haven't actually told you why I'm going to Bordeaux and that's mainly because I don't want to be in England the entirety of the year. I want to make sure I have a holiday somewhere and Bordeaux and France was the cheapest overall option including flights and accommodation and I also know a little bit of French so I think I can get by on my own. Obviously I'm traveling on my own, you don't see anyone with me and I didn't tell you I was traveling with anyone. I'll be honest, I thought it would be busier than this. I mean, look, it's fairly empty, you can see around me. There's like barely anyone here, but I'm assuming that's gonna change when I enter the terminal because uh, I can see a lot of people in the restaurants. Over there. Also, whenever I'm flying to another country, I like to play a little guessing game called how many times am I going to get a random security check? The most amount of times I have been picked for a random security check is four times on one journey from Norwich to Atlanta in the US. I got picked out four times, twice in the same airport for no good reason. I need to stop talking to the camera because my flight leaves in an hour and a half and I don't know how long security and the whole check-in stuff is gonna take.
As viewers of the vlog will know, I'm a big fan of Edinburgh Gin. And the fun fact about airports and Edinburgh Gin is that there is an exclusive flavour for just airports. Which is this watermelon and lime gin. You can only get this in certain airports in the UK. And I have been wanting to try this for God knows how long. I haven't been to an airport in so long and I've forgotten how much I love being in a duty-free store and being in the whole airport holiday flying travel vibes. I absolutely love flying and I'm so happy I get to do it after so long. You can't see because I have a mask over my face for obvious reasons, but I have like a permanent grin right now. I am so happy that I'm flying. It's honestly unreal. Bloody hell, this place is big. I've forgotten how massive Gatwick Airport is. Look at it. It's massive. Also, with my current getup of random Lyle and Scott bag, under on my backpack, I look like an absolute tourist, but I don't care. I absolutely love it. It's great. I probably definitely overreacted with how much time it would take me to get through security, because I thought it would take me about an hour, but I'm used to the old like security times that it takes. But instead, it took me about three minutes. However, I did have to get checked twice. Both were my fault. Well, one was my fault. One, I went through the metal detector wearing a watch made of metal, so obviously that sent alarm bells. And the other thing was apparently my iPad is too thick, so they had to rescan that, which is a it's, a... it's a strange thing to have to rescan something for, but eh. I thought x-rays could go through, well, leather and plastic, but apparently not. I am gonna go and get myself some breakfast because it is now 8.45 and I have not had a single thing to eat today. I have got to know what a Wipermouth's breakfast is. so long, the queues were so packed, and it was so hot in there. But thankfully, after all my documents have been shown, I'm out. And I'm going to be immediately lost because I have no idea where I'm going. Fantastic. So I've just gotten myself tested at the airport so I can leave in three days. And so much has happened in the half an hour, 45 minutes I've tried to get myself tested that uh, it's a bit of a story. So when I reach my hotel, I will elaborate a little bit more on that. Okay, my next main goal is to figure out how the hell to leave this airport and get to the tourist office so I can grab my pass because uh, I literally see no signs for... Oh, there's a sign with buses. Okay, I see one sign and I have absolutely no idea 
where to pay for anything or where to go. <sighs> Travelling on your own is very stressful if you don't know how to read or say any of the things that everything is in. God help me. There's something about just being in France or being in mainland Europe which just seemed so much better than being in the UK. Like immediately as I stood or I stepped off the bus, it, it everything just felt like open and nice. Like the scenery is fantastic, the buildings look good. Basically France is better than England in terms of scenery that is and weather and probably food. Uh, I am gonna get run over by a car, but that's all right. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking to the camera because I'm gonna run into pedestrians and I am probably gonna get hit by something at some point. So I will see you at the hotel. Well, isn't this a nice little room? Before I talk about what happened in the airport, let me do a quick room tour. Starting off, we have the double bed, which I have all to myself. We have some hangers and a coat rack. We have a little table with a little chair underneath, TV, lights, socket. There's one over there and one over there. And then we come to the strange bit of the room. So we have a full body mirror. You can see me in all my sexiness. Then we've got your basin with mirrors, which is ruining my object orientation. That kind of makes no sense, but it doesn't matter. This is, um, I'm assuming, and shower. It's a shower. Oh, there's soap. And finally, we have a toilet in its own box, which is a little weird. That's the room. Oh God, I'm holding the camera really weirdly. Opposite my hotel room, there is a car for market. And I am very excited because that is my favorite supermarket for one reason and one reason alone. And that's because I can get salads from there, which actually tastes good. I, I have a little bit of a love affair with this supermarket because every time I go to like Europe, I always end up buying all my food from just the supermarket because I love it so much. I have a bit of a problem, but at least it's a problem with being healthy. I also forgot to mention something very, very, very important in my hotel room, and that's the air con. It has air con. You have no idea how frustrated I get when you go to places in hot countries and they don't have air con. Last time I was in France, I didn't stay in a place with air con and I melted for like three days. So I am very happy I have air con. So when I landed at the airport on the plane, there was an announcement saying that you could get COVID tested inside the airport. And because I am leaving in three days, I thought, you know what, I might as well get my COVID test out of the way so that I can go back. The current travel restrictions say that I have to have a COVID test in the three days prior to the day I leave. And the example on the website states that if I have a departure date on Friday, that means I can take a test on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday to be cleared to go on the Friday. That's what it says on the government website. However, trying to convey this to someone in French is a little bit out of my wheelhouse. So when I went to go and get myself tested, a security guard came to me and said, what day are you leaving? In French or in English, I can't remember. And I said, I am leaving on Thursday. And she said, no, 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 you can't have the test today. You have to come back here tomorrow. 
and I try to argue, no I don't, because it says so here. I ended up having the strangest conversation in French, because neither of us could speak the other's language particularly well, and it ended up just becoming a bunch of random words. So she started just shouting at me, trois jours, three days, jeudi, mercredi, mardi, which means Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, implying that you have to have the test on Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday to leave for Thursday. And I was like, no, lundi, mardi, mercredi, trois jours, and that's the three days that it says on the government website. Now, normal people will think that the security officer, the French, is correct. That, that is the correct interpretation of you needing to have a test three days prior. It makes sense that you include Thursday in that date. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday makes sense. And the British one doesn't. It ended up just being us shouting days of the week in French at each other until the person next to me just looked at me funny and she was like, nah, nah, just leave, do what you want and go get yourself a test. I did manage to get myself a test in the end and I should hopefully receive the results uh, tomorrow so I can fly back on Thursday. It was just a little bit of a weird story. I spent about 20, 25 minutes sitting at a little desk filling in a form for a PCR test whilst a woman is shouting days of the week at me in French. So. You know, <laughs> solo traveling in France without knowing the language. I, I, I can speak some French. I can say, can I have this please? Or how much did this cost? Not, my government interprets the phrase three days differently to how you are interpreting it. I can't say that in French. I don't know what government is in French or interpret is in French. Just a little bit of a, a strange experience when landing. I did make it to my hotel and I am just chilling for now, letting all my stuff charge. It is currently 10 to 6. I'm going to try and leave in a little bit and go out and see the nighttime attractions and go and get myself dinner, which should be easier than trying to get myself a COVID test because I have done the food bit on Duolingo. And as we all know, Duolingo is definitely the best way to learn another language. And it gives you the most useful phrases that you need in other languages. I don't know if that came across as sarcasm. It was meant to be sarcasm. Sometimes Duolingo gives you the weirdest phrases. I mentioned earlier that I had to go to the tourist information office, and I don't think I explained why. The reason I had to go there was to grab this. This is a Bordeaux city pass which allows me full access to the public transport system in Bordeaux, as well as some free access to the local attractions, museums, etc., instead of paying certain fees. So for the next couple days, I will be trying to maximize all of this as possible. And one thing that came with this is a cruise, which I'm going on tomorrow, apparently. I just sort of decided the spur of the moment thing, so, I'll be fun. Interesting fact about me is that if you notice the color of my skin compared to earlier in the video, you may notice the fact that I am now a million shades darker than I was when I started. And that's because, fun fact about me, I have a superpower of tanning. Basically, if I'm out in the sun or in any form of light for about an hour, then I tan a million, million shades darker. So I have to make sure I have a lot of this SPF 50 to effectively slow down my tanning so I don't become a very, very, very dark piece of chocolate.
I'm walking across the famous bridge in Bordeaux called the Pont du Pierre. It's like the big famous bridge of Bordeaux. I have an interesting story about this bridge. As you can see behind me, there's like a, a cycle lane and there's like a bus lane. So in Bordeaux, you have ubiquitous e-scooter use and they have like their own lanes as you can see behind me. Last time I was in Bordeaux, I was on an e-scooter on one of these lanes at night. And as I was on the e-scooter, behind me came an ambulance. And I was going max speed on this e-scooter, uh, e so I couldn't go any faster. And the edges of the road here, they're all raised, so I can't like go onto the curb to let an ambulance go past me. So I could try and stop. However, when I tried to stop, um, there was a there's a tram. There's a, you can see there's a tram lines in the middle. Um, a tram also came by at the exact same time. So I was just absolutely petrified, stuck in <laughs> the middle of this e-scooter lane with an ambulance behind me and a tram next to me. And what ended up happening was the ambulance ended up going onto the tram lines and then trying to overtake me once the uh, tram had gone by. So, fun times on this bridge. Another thing that I haven't actually mentioned is the weather. It is currently 25, 26 degrees Celsius and there's a little bit of a breeze, which means this is the literal perfect temperature to be in. This is like good 25 degrees, not like England 25 degrees, because England 25 degrees is basically like you're melting and you can't do anything. But mainland Europe 25 degrees is absolutely lovely. Like, this is just fantastic to be in. It's just fantastic to be out here. Like, I absolutely love it. I think I've already said this a million times in this video already, but I just absolutely love it here. It's absolutely fantastic. I've said absolutely way too many times that it's bugging me. Over there, you might notice that there's a lot of people congregating around this particular area. And for context, the uh, rest of this, well, Riviera, river bit is fairly empty. And that's because there's another attraction over there. Something called, um, off the top of my head, Le Miroir de Gaulle, which translates to the mirror of water. It's basically, well, just like a nice sort of level bit of water, which reflect, reflect, reflects really nicely at night. But during the day, it just looks like a place where people just chill out and cool off. And also, there's another bloody massive building thing. That is also a landmark, but I've forgotten the name of it. I will remember it later. But it's bloody huge, and this place probably looks better at night. Have I ever mentioned to you that I have a slight fear of heights? It's not a crippling fear, but it's a slight fear. And I'm going up in this Ferris wheel 
by myself, which is a little bit rickety, but I'm hoping the view is going to be worth, you know, the feeling that I'm going to completely soil my shorts. This is one hell of a good view. I mean, oh god, I'm going back down. Oh no, go back up. No. I am slightly scared to death, but you know, it's a good slightly scared to death. The wheel is sort of stopped at the top, like I'm pretty much at the peak. So I'm just like, you have this amazing view of the main city over there, the sort of touristy stuff over there, and uh, where I'm staying, which is on that bit over there, on that island across the river. Sort of, not island, but like that other bit across the river. That's where I'm staying. And there's the bridge, as you can see over there. You can see all of Bordeaux from up here. And it is absolutely beautiful. So right next to the big massive Ferris wheel that I was just on, just literally behind it, there is a massive monument, and forgive my French, this is called the Monument au Girardin, maybe? Um, it's basically, it's a, it's a war monument, or a revolutionary monument, to commemorate the people who re revolutionized this area, or this part of France. I'm assuming that's what Wikipedia says, and uh, I don't know much about French history, so I'm just gonna go off what Google and Wikipedia says. The only things that I really learned about French history in school were the fact that the French s surrender a lot. Actually, I might not have learned that through school. I might have learned that through memes instead, which isn't exactly the uh, best way to learn about history, but it is an effective way to learn about history. So I've managed to find somewhere to eat for dinner. Instead of doing the touristy thing and finding a place on Google, I instead walked around a bit, got lost, and then ended up at this place. I have literally no idea what it's called, but it does bistro like food. And oh my god. Hi, Macy. And I'm having wine, so I'm very, very happy. I have never been more proud of myself in my life. I managed to order food in complete French by myself. It means my hours of Duolingo has paid off. I am managing to get food and not die in another country, which is, which is a fairly good goal when it comes to holiday. Not dying is a, ow, mosquito. Not dying is step one of going on holiday. Uh, I'm very, very, very proud of myself. More so than GCSEs, A-levels, and getting into med school. This trumps literally all of it. I mentioned earlier that Bordeaux in the day, it looks very nice. However, Bordeaux, when it's at night, is even better. So I've just finished having dinner and it took about two hours in total. I spent quite a lot, a long time there and it's enough time for everything to go dark. As you can see, the sun is, well, set and all the buildings around me have started to be well, lit up, and 
in the middle, right here, this is the main central area in Bordeaux. I'm not sure if this camera is going to do it justice, but there's a giant lit up massive fountain. And I'm going to try and head over onto the other side of the road to have a look at the entire street. Because I believe that this place looks even better from that side of the road. Let's attempt to try and vlog and cross tram lines and not get hit by stuff. Tram line. I mean, you can see behind me, this place looks amazing. And I'm not sure you can see, just over there, you can see the Ferris wheel that I was on earlier today. It's now lit up blue. And in front of me, if I don't get hit by a car, well, I will get hit by a car if I cross there. Uh, in front of me is uh, Le Miroir d'Eau, and God, that was a terrible pronunciation. But all of the lights that are in the city, over there, uh, all of the lights that are in the city are now reflecting off of that one rectangle of water. It's times like this I really do enjoy travelling because you've just got the fantastic view in the background of the bridge, you've got the fantastic view on this side of the main city, and then you've got the lovely river. I mean, the river looks much nicer at night than it does in the day because it actually looks, well, blue at night and not, you know, brown sludge during the day. But Overall, I mean, just the general atmosphere of being in a place like this, like, like, y you don't get this in, like, England. And I, it, it's just the weather, I think, that makes this a bigger difference. Like, look, you've got, like, people, e-scooters. You've got people looking around, like, just with their families. You've got tourist attractions. You've got people just chilling. There's, like, green areas here where people are just chilling. Like, it's all just calm. And that's sort of what I envision living here, being like, just a bit more calm. I've arrived back in my hotel room. I am absolutely shattered. I have had so much food. I have done so much walking and it is literally only day zero of me being in France. And to top off this evening, night even, I got the results back from my COVID test and it was negative, which means that when I have to fly back in three days, I can. So I think I'm going to get some well-deserved sleep and figure out what I'm doing tomorrow. I don't really know. I'm just sort of making it up as I go along, which is usually the best recipe for a good holiday. Good morning. It is currently almost 9 a.m. I have been up for the last hour and a half getting myself ready, I have had a shower, and I've been figuring out what I'm going to try and do today. And the first main attraction I'm going to see is Le Cité du Vin, which translates to the City of Wine, which is, I think, like a museum slash wine tour slash tourist trap. So I'm going to go there and learn about wine, uh, but before that, I am going to go, uh, well, out there, to go and get myself some breakfast. Because in there, they have fresh orange juice and fresh pastries and 
that's my quintessential breakfast when I am traveling. Disappointment is immeasurable. They didn't have fresh orange juice. So I just got a pan of chocolate and a lot of water, which was very cheap and cold. I don't know why England doesn't do this either. We also like cold and cheap water. Why should water be like two pounds for a bottle this big? Makes no sense. one point in the video, I promise I will ride on one of these and I will try and film it as best I can. Although I don't know how safe filming and doing one of these e-scooters would be. But as you can see, I've got my little vlogging camera here in the shadow. Fun fact I have learned about this camera is that the little LCD display that I have to tell what I'm filming is polarized. And funnily enough, my sunglasses are also polarized except they are polarized in perpendicular directions, which means if I put my sunglasses on, I literally cannot see what is on the display. It is complete black, which proves how good the display is, and my sunglasses are. But it also is a bit of a nuisance on hot days like this, because, well, I can't tell what I'm filming if I have my sunglasses on. I'm just sort of hoping I'm in the right area. mug forgot to get their ticket to enter this place and thought their pass was just enough. Nope. I need to go from the front of the queue right back to the entrance and then go get myself an actual ticket. Fantastic.
Right, I have finished now with the La Cité, La Cité du Vin. Uh, it was actually fairly good. They had a really cool exhibit on um, senses and smells and like textures and flavors of different wines. Um, slight COVID trap because uh, you have to smell everything and the displays encourage you to try and well smell the smells and put your nose into these like funnels which i'm fairly sure will have contained some covid virus so the likelihood of me getting infected on this holiday has severely shot up and the queue for me to get some wine because i had a uh, included wine tasting that was very very long and very very crowded i managed to have uh, a sweet white wine I should take this off actually I managed to have a sweet white wine, which was very, very nice. I got judged for being English, but I'm assuming that happens all the time. I swear to God, whenever I try and vlog, there's always like some high-pitched noise going on in the background. There's always some guy on like a scooter or a motorbike. They're the ones that make the worst noise when you're uh, going on to traffic. I don't know what I'm saying. My brain's trying to focus on crossing traffic and talking, and it's not very good at both of them at the same time. It is 10 to 1 and I am going to go and get myself some lunch and sit in the Jardin Public, a public garden. Um, get myself some lunch, sit there for a bit and then go to a port for a river cruise which I have included with my city pass. I thought my French was getting better, but then I realized I was slightly terrified to ask a cashier for a fork in French. So now I have ended up with food, which I need a fork for, without a fork. And uh, I'm gonna have to make shift something and not die whilst crossing roads. Let's do a quick lunch haul. I have a chicken bagel or poulet crudité. I think I said poulet with a bit too much emphasis on the P. Uh, got some taboule or poulet. Again, a bit more emphasis on the P. Uh, this is the thing I need a fork for because it's like rice or couscous or taboule. I don't know if it translates into something. And uh, I got some galettes, which are like biscuits. I think. I don't really know why I got these, I just sort of did. Uh, so I'm gonna go have some lunch, chill, and then take in this beautiful scenery. Because around me, aside from there being an imminent emergency, um, it's lovely out here. I'm just sitting on like one of the ends of the garden, next to a tree. There is a little river over there, and then this is just lots of greenery which is very nice to sit and have lunch too. I've managed to use my very, very big medical student brain to makeshift a spoon out of the cardboard from my bagel to eat my table with. So, big brain move here. It's just my luck that as soon as I sit down somewhere, I get bitten by a million things. I think I've now gotten like my first three, four mosquito bites of this trip. And I have a feeling I sat down in a, a, a bit of a, an ant's colony, ant's nest, because there was a million little ants all over my legs and all over my bag. So I'm having the best luck. So for the last hour or so, I have just been listening to some music, watching some videos and just, you know, 
enjoying the beautiful scenery around me and I've had this like wave of tiredness come over me and I think that's changing my plans somewhat. So next I have my river cruise to go on but after my river cruise I am going to go back to my room and nap because I'm not going to be able to function for the rest of the evening. So after my nap I will then come out back into the city and do evening stuff. I haven't really thought what I want to do yet, although I am in the mood for churros, so I might find a place that does churros. Oh, and dinner, obviously, because at that point it'll be like 7, 8 p.m. River cruise done and over with and it was very interesting learning about the city and all the various different bits about Bordeaux. One of the coolest things that I think I've learned from that entire trip is to do with the river. So the river has this particular colour. Uh, earlier I called it like slightly dirty brown sludge during the day and apparently that's offensive to the people of Bordeaux because they don't like this water to be called dirty. This water in fact is actually very very clean and the waterways in or the water in this river is actually one of the cleanest waterways in Europe and on the boat they showed a demonstration of like normal tap water and the water from the river and the only reason that the water has this colour is to do with the sediment that's at the bottom and it's a tidal river so the tide obviously shifts to sediment, giving it this colour. And apparently the people of Bordeaux prefer this river to be called the colour blonde because of a poem written about the river in the 14th century. So, very interesting tour, very helpful tour guide as well. I need to go back now and it's going to take me like 20 minutes to get back, spend an hour in the hotel and then come out for dinner and evening stuff. Right, I have napped, I have showered, and I am now ready to go out for dinner. So dinner was very very good, uh, except for the fact when a pigeon decided to defecate on my back, which was not so good. The meal was good, creme brulee dessert was good, yet I still chose to get myself some melon. <laughs> I uh, still chose to get some melon sorbet for some reason in a cone, my French isn't that good. 
um, for even more dessert. I'm now gonna go head out to the river, chill, and then try to, for the love of God, go on an e-scooter and try and film myself or film the journey that I have on the e-scooter with my tripod. Otherwise, bringing it will have been slightly useless. Right, this is attempt number two of me trying to get this shot. I hope it's worth it. A hundred percent definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. This sodding pigeon has ruined my good shirt or good t-shirt that I brought on holiday. And it's the only one of these I brought and I'm very angry. After I felt something hit my back, I looked up and I saw this pigeon and I knew exactly what it did. So I'm gonna let this soak in some water and then try and wash it before I leave because I want to wear this. Before I go to bed, I need to fill in my passenger locator form for flying back because I need to do that 48 hours before I fly, which is, well, right now actually, I leave in two days. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna get some sleep and then I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do tomorrow. It is currently 10 past nine, and I am going to grab some breakfast and then head out to the first thing of the day, which will be one of the big main churches that are in Bordeaux. And apparently I can climb up onto the spire and look across the entire city. the way the weather's looking because it's very very grey and I don't have an umbrella or another set of shorts slash trousers or another clean t-shirt so if it rains I'm a little screwed so I don't think I've done breakfast properly with my choice of food for today I have gotten uh, a chicken mayo sandwich, I'm assuming that's what it says in French, and uh, a, a flan? Flan? I don't know what the correct pronunciation in English is. Um, because they didn't have any bags for me to take any of the fresh pastries, and I was very, very annoyed at that. And their orange juice machine still isn't there, or slash is broken, or slash I can't find it. And the salad bar I was so excited about doesn't exist anymore because they've replaced it with just water and I'm so mad I was so excited to have salad for like breakfast or lunch from this salad bar realization earlier that I'm a very slow walker apparently or at least I've become a very slow walker as when I was crossing the bridge I thought I was walking at a fairly normal rate and then the entire population of Bordeaux decided to walk past me and I was like terrified that I've suddenly become this really slow unhealthy person who can't walk at a normal rate like when the hell did people 
start walking so fast? Or when the hell did I become so slow? <sighs> Shouldn't have had that flan for breakfast. that people can actually go on is I think 60 meters high 70 meters high and these stairs are not comfortable to walk up god I am far too unhealthy for this I need to go back to the gym of a drama queen because the stairs weren't too bad and the view you get of Bordeaux I'm not sure if the camera is going to focus but the view you can get is absolutely amazing it's really strange to see all of these like little older style houses from above it's cool though look at that view next thing that I am going to do is uh, go into this museum not because I plan to go in mainly because uh, I can with my city pass and I didn't know what else to do and I was on the way to something else which I wanted to go see anyway. museum now. It, I was there for about I think like an hour, an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Um, it was interesting. I liked seeing all the culture, all the history and stuff, except uh, I forgot the bit that I didn't know French. So trying to read all of the exhibition like descriptions 
that were in French was a bit, you know, annoying. Half of it was translated into English, so I could read some of it. But for the majority of it, I had literally no idea what any of it was about. So I just sort of admired all the stuff. And I'm currently um, outside, I think it's called Bordeaux Cathedral or St. Andrews, St. Andre Cathedral. It's a big cathedral. This is the thing I was looking for or going to before I went into the museum. And this is the place where I'm going to try and find some place to sit down, some place to grab some lunch or get a drink or something because I've been on my feet now for about four or five hours and I'm very tired and I have back pain. Uh, I'm basically now 60 years old from being outside for four hours. So next to the massive cathedral over there, behind me, you can see a place called uh, the Hotel de Ville, which I thought was a hotel because it had hotel in the name, but no, in fact, this is like the main town hall, city hall in Bordeaux, and that looks absolutely phenomenal. This literally puts all other city halls in the UK to shame. That looks amazing, and it's in this amazing area. And then in England, we've got like, you know, all right buildings, but th th this, this place is just a million times better in comparison. Sorry, England, I feel like I'm a, uh, uh, your, your, England's name is taking a bit of a beating in this vlog, but uh, well, I mean, the evidence presents itself and it's fairly conclusive. This is just better. Decided to sit down in a cafe or a patisserie? Patisserie. Um, outside the cathedral, literally opposite the main cathedral. And I have decided to get myself a little cheesecake and a coffee. And I think there's half a macaroon there. Macaron? Macaron. Oh my god, I've forgotten the name of it. I've got one of them, half of them, which is very nice. And I'm going to sit here and chill for a bit before I figure out what I'm going to do next. I'm basically, I'm making this trip up as I go along now because um, I've done everything I've sort of planned out and wanted to do. Now I'm just, uh, now I'm just enjoying myself here. I'm on Baker Street. I'm not. I think this is just a pub which is called Sherlock Holmes. But you know, if it's 221B, then it'll be amazing. So I've decided to come to Starbucks for a bit of a refreshing drink. I have a nice cool lime drink, literally called cool lime and I'm sitting outside on a warm day, it is 21 degrees and as I was in Starbucks a bit of a problem has presented itself. So currently the rule is in France, whenever you go into any venue, restaurant, museum, attraction etc, you have to show proof of double vaccination and from the NHS you get given an NHS certificate telling you that um, if you scan a QR code on it, it tells whoever scanned it that you have received uh, this vaccine and the details of said vaccine and if you've received both of them it gives details for both of them and you have to use that QR code here in France. Up till now I have been using my QR code on my Covid pass just fine except when I try to go into Starbucks try to scan my Covid pass and it said that it wasn't accepting my pass anymore, which is a bit of a problem. It's saying I don't have both my vaccinations, which I definitely do because otherwise, well, I mean, I've vlogged myself getting vaccinated as well as, um, you know, gotten into the country without needing to quarantine because if you don't have both vaccinations, you do need to quarantine when entering France. I'm a little worried that now my COVID certificates and stuff don't accurately represent um, me, me anymore, uh, which is going to be a bit of a problem 
for the rest of today and tomorrow and I'm hoping uh, this problem doesn't present itself again because I do not want to be at the border trying to leave and it's saying that I don't have both my vaccinations. Otherwise, I'm going to enjoy my drink for now and um, be silently internally a bit stressed. I've not actually ended up doing much today. I've just had um, a poke bowl, which is actually a bit strange because I didn't realize how popular poke was in Bordeaux. Like, like pharmacies in France, they're pretty much on every street, which is a bit strange to me, but it was very good. And I wish that more places in the UK, or I wish that poke was a bit more ubiquitous in the UK. I was meant to go um, on a trip somewhere, but I ended up going on that like the day before the river cruise. I booked it for today, but I also booked it for yesterday. Bit strange, but that's all right. Um, but honestly, relaxing and just enjoying the scenery and being in another country, being in a nice warm place, and I get to relax, listen to music, see the sights. It's honestly one of the things that you need to do on holiday. You don't need to keep going to places and don't need to keep forcing yourself to do things. Just relaxing and enjoying your time is the purpose of a holiday. And if I am doing that by just relaxing, having food, a lot of food, having some nice drinks, then, well, that's, that's the point of the holiday. I have, I have achieved what I have aimed. Uh, I'm now going back to the hotel to actually do the passenger locator form because I was supposed to do it last night, but I forgot. Slash couldn't be bothered because I was very, very tired. Uh, but I can't have that attitude, oh God. Uh, I can't have that attitude today uh, because I'm leaving tomorrow. So I'm gonna get this done before I feel tired. One hour in my hotel room, come out and then find something to do, chill even more. Holding this camera is really, really tiring for my arm. I don't tend to hold this camera for two minutes straight. I'm gonna shut up now and uh, I'll see you later. So my passenger locator form has been done. It is now like seven, half seven. I'm gonna make my way back across the river and probably go to a bar of some kind and get myself a cocktail and enjoy the rest of the evening. Right, bit of an odd thing that just happened. A man came up to me uh, and asked me for directions to some place in French and I obviously don't know French. So I said, sorry, I don't know French in French. And then he responded, I don't believe you because you're speaking French. To which I responded in the most British accent I have ever done in my life. It's like I had suddenly become one of the Queen's knights and speaking in an old English accent. And uh, then he believed me because uh, no one can fake that British an accent. Even though I arrived literally only like two days ago, three days ago, two days ago, um, I'm gonna miss being here. I do miss the uh, environment of somewhere so open and so aesthetically pleasing. I mean, walking every day from the hotel into the city, going across this bridge, seeing the, well, riverside? River area of Bordeaux, the word is eluding me, but seeing that sort of Riviera area bit, it's very nice and it's very calming. And as someone who uh, appreciates a good environment, makes me very happy.
I'm really sad to be leaving Gordo. I really do like it here. I've had a really good time here in the last few days and I absolutely love, well, just being in an environment like this. Really big, really open, the nice river, the nice, you know, riverfront. That's the word I was looking for earlier. It's just really nice being here. And I really don't want to go back to um, England, but you know, obviously I have to. But uh, I really do recommend trying to travel on your own and, you know, visit new places, do new things, because I've, I've very much enjoyed my time here and doing all the things that I have done and going to visit all the new places that I've been to. It's just, honestly, it's been absolutely great. And I recommend anyone who is watching this to do so themselves. It's better with friends. However, most of my friends are not vaccinated. So, very different rules apply to them. However, if you have friends and they're all vaccinated, I recommend you go on a trip somewhere because it's absolutely great. Turns out I'm a million times better at French after a glass of wine uh, as opposed to not because I've managed to order an entire McDonald's without um, yeah. speaking any English whatsoever. That is mega impressive for me. I'm better at French after wine. How very French of me. <laughs> Guys, I'm basically a French pro. I managed to order myself uh, some ice cream in French, complete French. And I'm so happy that I didn't have to speak a word of English. It's unreal, the feeling when you've learned or tried to learn a language and you end up speaking it properly and manage to do something in it. And I have gotten myself some banana sorbet. So uh, it's a very good treat and a very good reward for learning all the French I have in the last couple months. Guess who, on the last day of being here, managed to drop their camera on the floor and scratch it really badly. This guy! I've managed to scratch my camera very heavily. So I have reduced the resale value to basically nothing. But that's okay, because I plan on using this camera quite a lot, so hopefully it doesn't matter that the resale value is kind of ruined. Dropping 800 pounds worth of camera equipment seems like a very naffy thing to do on the first time I am properly using this camera. I am very mad at myself for dropping this, but uh, you know, can't change the past right now. Just gotta live with a very scratched camera. I'm very mad. I'm very, very mad. Good morning everybody, it is now the day I am leaving. I have been up for about an hour, hour and a half, and I have been, you know, getting washed, getting ready, and uh, planning, uh, not planning, uh, packing my stuff. So clothes there, bag, electricals, important documents, sunglasses. So I am all prepared and ready to leave. It takes about an hour to get from here to the airport and it's like I don't have much walking to do. So I might go out onto the river and have breakfast on the riverfront on this side of the river and then chill before heading on my tram, then bus to the airport and then flying away.
I did a big brain move and I got on the wrong tram. So I'm now having to walk back to the same tram station that I left from to go get on the correct tram, which apparently is on the other side. And it's different to all the other tram stations because I thought it was in the same direction as traffic. But no, this one tram station is different. Hate my life. Hate my life. Now that I've passed passport control, I can now officially say that I am back in England. And I immediately want to go back to France because uh, it's immediately colder. I was about to get run over by a little thing. That's all right. I don't know why I left two hours between me getting off the plane and me getting a train which in fact has now been cancelled because I got an email about it. So a great way to start my journey back uh, home. But getting through passport control took me literally two minutes, if that. It was ridiculously quick. And now I have a very, very long wait. And I also have to figure out how I'm gonna get home because I don't know if my tickets are valid for going back. And I am back where I started this vlog, back in my bedroom. The trip from Gatwick to Norwich was indeed a little bit boring, a little bit tiring. So I am a little, you know, bleh at the moment. I'm going to do a COVID test to see if I have possibly gotten infected along the way and end this vlog here. I literally have no idea how long this vlog has been. It could be like 15 minutes. It could be like 40. I literally don't know. I have filmed nearly like three and a half hours of footage, which is which is a lot. Uh, so if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I've hoped you've enjoyed this vlog and I will see you next time. Take care.